As we begin to get into the mechanics of learning analytics, we have to begin to understand some levels of detail. We need to begin to understand much more about the types of data and the sources of data uh, that we're going to be using. So sources of data, for example, could be information from swipe cards as students move across the campus, telling us the sorts of things that they're doing. Another obvious source of data is the use of library resources. So different sources of data that feed the rich picture that's going to emerge out of learning analytics. And then there are different types of data. So there's historic data, the past records that we use to build up a system to establish trend. Then on the other hand, there's real-time data, data that we're collecting right now as learning is happening across the institution. So learning analytics requires a good, clear understanding of sources and types so that we can be systematic in the way that we work and build these complex models. One key source of data for learning analytics is the virtual learning environment, the VLE. The VLE has become ubiquitous across colleges and universities now. Virtually everybody has one. Um, there are different uh, uh, systems. It could be Blackboard, it could be Canvas, it could be Moodle, it could be Sakai, um, it could be others. They all do very much the same sort of thing and they become part of the familiar landscape of a university or a college. And the sort of data that we would expect to collect from the VLE uh, would be uh, student class lists, um, assignments, grades, uh, information on student participation, student presence, for example, login information. So the, the VLE gives us the standard information about the student who's registered for a course, and it's the heart of uh, learning analytics data sets. A further key source of information is the student information system. And again, this is something that every university has. Um, it's often owned by the registrar's office, for example, and it contains the basic information about the student as a person. So it provides us with the student number, it tells us the date of registration, it tracks uh, the student's performance, it gives us the formalities of the courses that have been passed, uh, the award eventually of the degree or the qualification. It also provides us with critical uh, demographic information about the person. It will tell us uh, gender, it will record uh, disabilities, for example. It will give us information such as postcode. It should give us information about age, nationality, a whole range of individual profile information. Uh, and that, of course, is vital for us to understand the overall uh, enrollment patterns of a university or a college. Attendance monitoring systems are an increasingly important part uh, of learning analytics data sets as a whole. Attendance monitoring is complicated in most institutions. Uh, essentially, it is built uh, from either swipe card data or student self-reporting data. It replaces the old class lists that might have been collected years ago. Um, it's complicated because most universities and colleges have quite complex physical environments. They don't require a security swipe in uh, at every uh, particular point that a student might go to in the institution in a normal teaching day. But most universities are now able to keep quite sophisticated records about whether students are physically on a campus or not on a campus. And this information has been used extensively in early warning systems to give us information about students who might be at risk. An increasingly important source of information for learning analytics is library data. Of course, we've traditionally known quite a lot about how students use libraries because in most cases, when you physically go into a library, you swipe in and we have a record of that. But these days, most sources are online and online library resources give us far more information. We can see what students are reading. Uh, we can see which journals they're looking at. We can see how frequently they download material. This gives us a very rich understanding of the relationship between learning resources and the learning process. So this is a very rich and interesting source of information for learning analytics. Self-reported sources of data are the information that the student voluntarily submits as part of the learning analytics process. Um, this could be any response, feedback for example, that a student might give, um, comments um, on a forum, a response to a survey poll, um, 
um, anecdotal comments about how a student's getting on with their learning process that might be submitted via a learning app uh, that a student is given by their university. This information is going to be increasingly important because, of course, it's part of the interactive process, and learning is fundamentally an interactive process. Uh, we're going to see, I think, a great deal more self-reported data coming into learning analytics uh, as learning analytics becomes prevalent across our education systems and as, of course, we develop more and more sophisticated student dashboards that allow students to interact uh, with this process and give us that real valuable uh, feedback um, on how their learning is progressing. Learning is an intensely individual process, <clears throat> but we also learn according to patterns. Um, we learn in ways that are similar to other people. And one of the ways that learning analytics can contribute to the individual's performance is to constantly compare them to their group. And this is why historic data becomes so interesting and so important. So if I want to understand how well an individual student is doing in a particular course, I can understand that far better if I've got rich information uh, as to the way that other students have behaved over time under those similar sorts of circumstances. It allows me to build a much richer picture and to anticipate uh, future needs in a far richer way. This is why trend data is so significant for us in taking learning analytics from the general group down to the needs um, of the individual. And this again is a very particular advantage of learning analytics because it allows us to collect that information systematically and coherently through time. So it's all about understanding the needs of the individual and building those needs against the generalized picture.